Hi, my name is Roger Hallowell. I'm the faculty member in charge of the service major. I'm delighted to have some time to tell you about the major, and I want to thank you for taking the time to take a look at this video. First of all, why would someone want to do the service major? Um, the only really good reason for wanting to take the service major is because you're interested in how organizations um, differentiate themselves through the service that they deliver. Now that might be the service that is their service in the case of traditional service organizations. It might be the service that a professional service firm delivers. Uh, or it could be the service that a goods producing firm attaches to its product in order to differentiate it. Uh, so there are a whole variety of different types of organizations that can benefit from uh, differentiation through service. Uh, needless to say, not-for-profit organizations and governmental organizations can also benefit. Uh, and we've had people from a wide variety of types of organizations over the years who have gotten a lot out of the major. Um, that being said, if you're not interested in learning how to differentiate the quality of what you deliver through service, service major doesn't make sense for you. Um, the title of the service major is actually... Um, the service and innovation major. And we do deal with innovation in a service context. So we look at best practices for service organizations in innovating. Um, that being said, if all you're interested in is innovation and not service, you won't be happy in the service major. And so please don't take it. Uh, one of the best practices for services is to help uh, their customers to self-select in or out. Uh, and so one of the things that I want to do uh, with this video is to help you decide whether or not you're interested in the service major uh, and whether or not it will be right for you. Uh, I would like to have a group of people, uh, I don't care what the size is to be honest, um, who are really excited about studying how to differentiate through service, uh, including how to innovate in a service context. Um, uh, much more than a, a very large group of people uh, who have a variety of interests and ultimately a, 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 a sizable majority of them are disappointed. Um, and that's not good. Um, by the way, why is that not good? It's not good because of what we call the economics of customer loyalty. Uh, we know that for service organizations and for goods organizations that get their differentiation from the service that they deliver, um, Customer loyalty is the primary driver of profitability and growth. Now, I chose my words carefully there. I said primary driver. I didn't say the only driver. Um, so I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm talking about. Um, but loyalty in terms of repurchase, in terms of engaging in positive word of mouth referral, and in terms of being willing to be cross-sold uh, is the most important uh, dimension leading to profitability and growth for services. And uh, although profitability isn't something that I'm interested in, I am interested in continuing to run the service major. And uh, so I want people who are going to be very happy with it. Um, where are we going? Uh, we'll be going to two different cities. Uh, this year, it's going to be Singapore and Stockholm. And they've been chosen very intentionally. Um, Singapore is a fantastic place. We'll be in Singapore in May. Fantastic place uh, to look at uh, a couple of different things. Um, first of all, Singapore Airlines. Um, the most impressive airline uh, on the face of the earth today. I don't mean to offend anyone in saying that, um, but if you look at the airlines that have been consistently profitable and have won awards over the years, uh, nobody comes close to Singapore. Um, why is that? And frankly, what can we learn from Singapore Airlines that we can then apply to a wide variety of other organizations. Uh, we will be visiting Singapore Airlines uh, and we're actually going to have a day uh, in which we discuss Singapore Airlines um, being led by Joachim Wurtz, who is one of the world's leading experts on Singapore Airlines. He's um, living in Singapore and he's a professor at, professor at National University of Singapore and he will be joining us to, to discuss that. Um, also, Singapore is a fantastic place to go to look at uh, best practices in governmental services because, frankly, Singapore's government is quite extraordinary. I don't think that will come as a surprise to anyone. A tiny island with a population of approximately 5 million that is able to um, sustain a standard of living uh, that is as good as any place else in the world. Um, and when you consider the improvements in their standard of living, given where they were when they reached independence in the early 1960s, is absolutely extraordinary. Um, lots of things to, to criticize in the Singapore government, um, but also lots of best practices.
practices that can be uh, used and adopted by governments around the world. Um, and frankly, um, things that people at for-profit organizations can learn uh, and, and find very, very useful. Um, finally, in Singapore, we will get a taste of Southeast Asian service, which is different from service anywhere else in the world and uh, fascinating to understand and to study. Now, in contrast, we're going to be going to Stockholm for our week in October. Stockholm is uh, probably the most beautiful city in Scandinavia, um, maybe in Northern Europe. Um, uh, a fascinating place, uh, a lot of new high-tech uh, innovations coming out of there, and also the home of an organization called Svenska Handelsbanken, which is one of the most amazing uh, financial service organizations on the face of the earth. Um, an incredible place uh, that has consistently beat its peer group uh, in terms of return on uh, equity for the last 34 years, which is not something that many organizations can say. Um, we will be going and visiting them and studying what they're doing, what makes them different, uh, what makes them unique, and obviously what the rest of us can learn from them. Um, fascinating organization that, that has done away with budgeting entirely. Um, imagine how nice life would be for many of us if we could, if we could do that. Anyhow, um, it, it's, it's uh, too complicated a, a story to tell in a, in a short period of time, so if you're interested, uh, take the major. I look, look forward to, to having you. Um, we also are going to Stockholm because it enables us to explore Scandinavian service, which is completely and utterly different from Southeast Asian service. And I want you to understand why it's different. Um, obviously, you will experience what the differences are, and then I, I want you to understand why and what's being done uh, about it and um, how this makes sense. And I, I'm hoping that it will give you a sense of how to think about service in your context and to be thinking about what is most appropriate and what are the ways that you can differentiate that will be financially viable, um, uh, whether you are a for-profit, not-for-profit, governmental, whatever, doesn't, doesn't matter. Um, who should not take the service major? The service major uh, is not for people who consider themselves experts on service. We've had several people who have um, deep and long backgrounds in service, uh, in some cases who have actually studied service, who've taken the service major, uh, and they feel that what we're doing is too elementary. Um, please, if you are an expert on services, don't take the service major because you will be unhappy. Uh, and again, I don't want that. Um, Uh, learning styles and teaching styles. Uh, the people who teach in the service major uh, expect the participants to actively participate. The service major is about people who want to be actively involved in the learning process uh, and who want to get a lot out of their learning experience as a result of being actively involved in the learning process. Um, but if you if you don't want to be actively involved, then um, please, please choose someplace else. Um, I discussed the economics of customer loyalty, which are one of the essential uh, concepts that we'll be, we'll be talking about. The, the other is the economics of employee loyalty and why it is that having employees um, who are genuinely loyal to the goals of the organization. When we talk about employee loyalty, we're not just talking about employees who stay for a long time. We're talking about employees who, help, who want to help the organization to achieve its goals. Um, absolutely critical to service. Um, what we tend to see in both customers and employees in services that are outperforming their competitors over an extended period of time is what are referred to as ownership behaviors on the part of both customers and employees. We have customers who, who act like they are owners of the service. We have employees who act as if they are owners of the service. And, and these are the essential ingredients um, for the economics of customer and employee loyalty. And you will come to see not only what are the best practices in developing those things, um, but how do they affect the economics um, of an organization. Um, I'm just uh, checking my list to make sure that I'm going over all the points I wanted to make. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, if you have any specific questions, I hope you will send them to me. Um, 
I'd be happy to have a conversation with you if you like. Um, that's why we have Skype uh, and FaceTime. Um, uh, but I'd also be happy to answer emails if it's a if it's a yes or no type of thing. Um, you're welcome to to tell me that you'd like to have a conversation or to send me a question. Uh, my email address is Hallowell, that's H-A-L-L-O-W-E-L-L, at achasse.fr. Um, thank you again. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and I look forward to seeing you, perhaps. Bye.